The coalition of Northern Group's CNG has asked the federal government to grant amnesty for bandits. And the government has failed to protect the lives and properties of Nigerians, says Femi Gbadabia Mila, Speaker of the House of Representatives. And this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacon. The coalition of Northern Group, CNG, has urged the federal government to support Sheikh Ahmed Gumi's initiative by granting amnesty to bandits terrorizing the region. In a statement made by the group, the spokesperson of the coalition, Abdulaziz Suleiman, said, and I quote, We emphatically repudiate the stance of the Northern State Governors Forum against open grazing without identifying suitable lands and creating grazing reserves and cattle routes after four years of lying about resettling the pastoralists through vague initiatives that were never materialized. And joining me to have this conversation this evening, I'm being joined by Ankyo Briggs. She is a human rights activist. And also joining us is Jack Vince. Thank you, lady and gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Great. I'm going to start with you, um, Ankyo Briggs, because you obviously have dealt with the issue of amnesty um, over the years. Um, you are a rights activist and you were involved with, to an extent, with the um, Niger Delta militants and the young people who were given amnesty. Um, can you paint a clear picture between what you saw in the Niger Delta and what this group, the CNG, is asking for, for bandits? All right, uh, good evening again. Uh, the reality is that um, Anyone who followed the, the story or later on caught up with the story of the Niger Delta uh, agitation, yes, Niger Delta people armed themselves, uh, the youths went into the creeks and were agitating and were making calls and those agitation was seen worldwide and even by the Nigerian government, whether they liked it or not, as a genuine agitation, as a matter of fact, long time, long standing, genuine agitation for equity, for justice. Um, it started from the days of Adakaporo, um, and then the war came and the Ijo Youth Council, we had the issue of uh, MEND after that. Um, we had the Creek issue, we had the, uh, of course, there was some uh, criminality in it as well, where uh, oil workers were also kidnapped and uh, uh, and stuff like that. So yes, we did have our own share of um, uh, of issues, but then they definitely were not terrorists. They were not terrorizing uh, uh, the the people the way that um, what is happening in the northeast. So there is no comparison. Um, they were not uh, burning and raping uh, women and burning villages and killing uh, scores and scores of people, 70, 80, 200, kidnapping school children and all of that. Those were not so, there is absolutely no comparison. Now, um, when that was going on, the target at that time was the oil uh, oil installations, of course, that was uh, uh, economic sabotage, if you like, and that was their way of expressing what, um, what they were saying. Now, um, at some point, there was a need. Uh, some of us in, the, uh, in our region uh, took it upon ourselves, and we decided to go around and make contact, try um, and make them to listen uh, to what the government was now saying that they would um, uh, create uh, uh, for which uh, the, the issues that we were discussing, we were demanding, could look at. So that was how amnesty, amnesty came about. Amnesty did not come about just one person getting up to say, let's grant uh, amnesty to, to Niger Delta people. It was actually offered by the government, and it was offered by the government in exchange so that uh, the government could have um, 
uh, a situation where the force majeure was removed. There was a force majeure. I mean, the output of oil was brought down to about 700 and something odd barrels a day from 200 and something barrels. So when you compare um, strangers coming into Nigeria, killing people, raiding people's uh, ancestral home, driving them away from their ancestral home, killing thousands and thousands of people, occupying states and uh, local government areas over the years. And then someone wants to discuss with the bandits, uh, these people that are coming in from Nigeria, that um, are leaving their countries, if they have one, coming into Nigeria and claiming Nigeria as their own. And you are now saying, there are people saying that they deserve amnesty. What really are the bandits talking about? What, okay. Who, what do they want? Okay, L let me go to Jack. Jack, you have covered stories. You've been covering stories um, in the northern part of the country. Um, as a journalist, what exactly um, have you seen and experienced in the, in the case of these bandits? And, and how has been the response that you've gotten or you've seen government give to that issue, and I'm talking about government at all levels, um, to that issue in the north? Oh, well, you see, uh, presently I, I live in Maiduguri and my immediate experience is actually that of Boko Haram. That said, I've covered uh, headsmen and their activities recently. And I know that in this part of the country, the ordinary people want anything that can be done to get respite from the problems, security challenges going on here. Mm -hmm. Now, the the headsmen have held everybody by the neck, mm -hmm. and it is a very big problem. A problem that everybody here wants to see go away immediately. The government seems to have been doing what they feel is the best that they could do, especially governments of states in the Northwest, where these things are prevalent. Mm -hmm. What they do is they try to meet with the leadership, get the knowledge of the leadership of these uh, uh, bandits to discuss issues on how they can stop doing these things that they are doing. But the bandits know very well that the system is weak and they are capitalizing on this to wreak havoc on everyday people trying to live their lives. And so if, so, if, if, is, so, so as a journalist, again, I'm, I'm, we're getting insight from you because you're a man on the ground, so you see these things maybe a bit more clearer than we see it. Now, obviously, you have made, you, you've gotten to a point where I wanted to get to later, that the system is weak, and these people are taking advantage of the weakness of the system. Now, let me take you and Ankyo Briggs back to 2019, if not 2018, where uh, the Sultan of Sokoto, um, Al-Haji uh, Sahad Abubakar, said that these people who were wrecking havoc in this part of the country, these so-called herders, um, are not Nigerians. And so I always ask, it, can a country or should a country like Nigeria allow for pe people who are not necessarily Nigerians to come from outside the country, wreak havoc, havoc on their country, and they still are asking for amnesty. And they're still asking, in fact, governors, I, I'd like to put it to you. The Kaduna, State, the Kaduna State government had at some point paid some of these bandits off so that they could allow the people have some form of respite. So is this what we should be doing or should we be showing force? I'll, I'll start with you, Ankyo. Yeah. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't know who, whom you were asking. No, no, no. It's you. Who I did. You? Yeah, I said I was going to start oh, with okay. you. Well, go. Oh, okay. Well, definitely, you've repeated. I mean, you've 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 said it that these uh, people, first of all, these criminals, these uh, bandits, these terrorists, whatever name you want to call them, they are not Nigerians. The president has said that they are not Nigerians. Um, the, the governor of Kaduna said they're not Nigerians. Um, Brutai said they're not Nigerians. They're not Nigerians. 
we all know what Nigerians look like. They're not Nigerians. They're coming from outside of Nigeria. So first of all, Nigeria is being invaded. So now, if the system has failed, it is the government that has failed. Because that is what the military is for. The military is there to make sure that the country is secure from outside invasion. Now, the country is not secure from outside invasion. That is why this... Um, this uh, people are coming in from outside of Nigeria, non-Nigerians, and coming to wreak havoc in Nigeria. Now, whom are you going to blame? Is it the fault of the, of the governors? Is it the fault of the uh, uh, communities that they are raising, that they are raising, driving them out of their communities and people are living in IDP camps? No, this is directly the fault of government. It's a failure. It's a serious failure. If you leave your front door open and you don't fix a padlock in it, and if you leave your windows open and there is no burglary proof in it, and somebody breaks in and you say, oh, somebody is broken, people will blame you. Nigeria is to blame. Now, the fact that these people are coming in and Nigeria seems to be unable to do anything about it is shameful. It's huh. just unacceptable. I don't know what else to say about it. Okay. And to compare it to uh, to uh, uh, to the Niger Delta, like I said, it's not acceptable. This is failure of government. Uh, Jack, I'm coming back to you now. Let me go to something that Sheikh um, Ahmed Gumi said um, while he was bringing up this idea for amnesty. He said, and I quote, the reintegration and reorientation of bandits who embrace peace is critical to ending uh, the insecurity in the north. So I want to know. How workable is this amnesty thing? Don't forget, we've just laid a, a background or a foundation that these people are not Nigerians. So what amnesty exactly. are we looking at here? And this, how realistic is it? All right. Uh, uh, the other guest that spoke, spoke very well, and she is really very right. You see, it, they have no basis, truth be told. You know? But there is something other Nigerians outside of the north, northern region don't quite understand. And that is the fact that the people in this part of the country have similarity with people that are invading the country. Similarity in terms of ethnicity, religion. Invariably, the people are one until some colonial people came around and partitioned the country, the, the people into different countries. The people don't see themselves as different, they see themselves as one. It may inform the reason some people in some quarters are saying, give this amnesty. Do we even now, know what amnesty what, is? I mean, because as much as we don't understand what's happening in the North, do, you really, do we really understand what amnesty is? And the, for, for us to call for amnesty, this is not well, a settlement. Well, probably, probably this is not a, a payoff. A, 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 Maybe a different terminology should be used instead of the word amnesty. Okay, let, let, let's take a look at what amnesty is. Let's just scroll up here and, and put it up on the screen. Guys, let's just look at the dictionary meaning of amnesty. Can, can you guys help me out here on my prompter? I'd like to read out what it is. Um, let's just take a quick look at what amnesty is and give it a dictionary meaning. Um, because when we're asking for amnesty... When we, when we ask for people to give us amnesty, uh, we need to know exactly what it is. So it, it's, it's more of a pardon. We're pardoning people who have killed, who have maimed. People were killed on their rice farms. People were slaughtered in their homes in the middle of the night. Um, cattle, cattle was um, taken into people's farms and destroyed. And when the people said, look, you're destroying my farmlands, these people were bitten, they were killed. Should we be asking for pardon for these kind of people? Is pardon what we need? I mean, it's a warrant granting a release from punishment of an offense. Uh, it's a formal act of liberating someone uh, um, you know, for a period during which offenders are exempt from punishment. So it's a pardon. You're granting a pardon to a group of people who have come into your country 
to destroy it. How acceptable is that, Jack? Ordinarily, it's not acceptable anywhere, and we know it. But what the ordinary, everyday farmers, artisans, traders in northern Nigeria are saying is, if anything could be done to alleviate their suffering, if anything could be done to stop them from being killed, slaughtered like farm animals, they won't mind it. If you call it amnesty, they won't mind if you mean the people will stop doing what they are doing, killing people. Thank you. Um, the Kaduna State Governor was berated in this statement. Um, he was um, berated because of his stance um, against negotiating with these bandits. I'm talking about Governor El Rufai. He spoke against negotiating with these bandits. Um, they said that his tactics would further bloodshed in these parts of the country, in the region. If every, um, again, if every Tom, Dick, and Harry is given amnesty, um, asking that people be pardoned. Thank you. I'm, I'm asking this question to you, ma'am. Um, yeah. Is this not yeah. an open call for people to carry out whatever acts that they believe is okay, knowing that there will be somebody calling for amnesty for them somewhere down the line? Um, when uh, they, This is not the first time, I might, uh, I might point out. This is not the first time the call for amnesty for, um, for bandits, have been made, even headsmen, even Boko Haram. See, even going with um, um, El Rufai, if you remember, at the beginning of El Rufai's first tenure, El Rufai came out and told us that he had paid, that he had been paying people who were coming into Kaduna to come and kill people in southern Kaduna. And it, it was, he, he had paid them a few times before he actually cried out that he was paying them, and yet they were still coming in to kill. Let's put that one um, um, aside. Now, if you say that, like um, uh, my young man there, uh, uh, Jack, is saying, that I, I do sympathize, I do understand, I am angry on behalf of the innocent people that are being killed in North Central the uh, uh, central of, uh, of, uh, of Nigeria. But look, the reality is this. If you, what we are saying, if we actually are supporting the call for amnesty, is more than just giving them amnesty. You're saying that strangers, non-Nigerians, should just walk into Nigeria, kill Nigerians until they, their stomach is full, and then we helpless Nigerians will now offer them amnesty. Fine, if you offer them amnesty, whose state are you going to keep them in? These, these non-Nigerians, where are you going to keep? Don't bring them to River State, for God's sake. Don't bring them to River State. Don't bring them to Niger Delta. Where are you going to keep them? Yeah. These are strangers. They are not Nigerians. They don't, it, 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 they don't belong in Nigeria. Why should we give? They are criminals. They came, are, are you telling me that uh, Mexico can just walk into America and begin to kill Americans and then America will now say one day they are giving them amnesty? Where, which state will they keep them? In Texas? Uh, where, what state? Are we going to create state? Where, whatever they're doing, they should keep it in the north. If that's, if that's the thinking... What? If that's the decision they have made, well, I guess then that, they should I, I guess that, that was the premise for my question. That's, that was the premise for my question, and I'm going to ask the same question to Jack in wrapping up and in closing. Um, if we continue to ask for uh, payoffs and handouts for these people who supposedly come to cause havoc or wreak havoc on our people, is this not a call for more and more people to take up arms and do whatever they like, knowing that somebody's going to help them at the end of the day and call for amnesty? And secondly, um, the CNG, uh, this coalition, are saying that governors should choose dialogue instead of force. Force is what the governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, is advocating for. Because let's not forget, Ankyo has also said that because they realize how weak, and you also said so, that they have capitalized on the fact that the state is weak to deal with this issue, and so they continue to do what they're doing. 
But the CNG here is saying, let's dialogue with these people instead of you know, using force. Um, so what do we do going forward? As a person who's in that region or covering stories in that region, what is the best way forward? Okay, I'll take you back quickly to Muhammad Yusuf, the founder of Boko Haram, and how it all started. You see, we had every indication that there was going to be chaos in future from everything he was doing. The, we had all the time in the world to dialogue with them at that stage and then nip the problem in the board. Uh -huh. It wasn't done that way until we got to where we are today. I see a similar thing playing out in the Northwest. Just the way the chef went, had a round table with them, find out what their grievances are or whatever it is, why the criminality and all that. This is the time to do a thing like that. Uh -huh. You may not call it amnesty, but this is the time to look at them in the face in a, on a round table to find out why they are doing what they are doing. Okay. But I will add quickly that they are just a bunch of criminals, thieves, armed robbers. Okay. That's, that's and, they should be they treated, and they should be treated uh, as you have described them. Well, I want to thank that's, you because okay. we're out of time. Anchor Briggs is a human rights activist and uh, Jack Vince is a journalist. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for having. inviting me. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we return, the Senate is calling for a rejig of our security uh, in the country. And of course, they're asking that the security architecture in the country be reshaped uh, for effective countermeasures to tackle the challenges that we're facing. We'll talk about it right after the break. <laughs>